What? Still having a soul's itch after finishing all the From Software stuff? Already soloed her a thousand times and feeling burned out? Well, good. Then this video is for you. This is Kinda Souls, my new series where we play various Souls-likes to see if they are worth the time and money spent, keeping it as spoiler-free as possible. We are people of taste, and our standards are high. Hello, Mighty Melvo here, and today we're checking out Mortal Shell, a Souls-like action RPG game made by a relatively unknown company called Cold Symmetry. So, is it good? Is it worth buying at a full price or should you wait for a sale? Is it worth picking up or is it just another half-baked Dark Souls ripoff? Well, actually, I wouldn't call it a ripoff, despite it indeed having numerous similarities with Dark Souls. But what makes Mortal Shell interesting and worth checking out, at least it was for me, is the newly introduced mechanics that are not like Dark Souls. Seriously, putting aside similar gameplay loop mechanics, you know, bonfires, souls, dodging and parrying, there is a lot in this game that looks and feels fresh and is totally unlike Dark Souls. The gameplay is really neat and fun, the combat animations are fluid, and the game looks pretty good. Beautiful, I'd say, especially, you know, considering the fact that it's made by an indie developer and it costs 30 dollars. I mean, honestly, Mortal Shell surprised me quite a few times. Let's dive in and see what's what. Video games! Let's go! You play as a foundling, this weird-looking husk monster guy straight out of scorn feels like. The game starts with you waking up in the tutorial area, walking around learning basic stuff about the game mechanics. Then you find a weapon, fight your first boss, die to them, get swallowed by a giant catfish and awoke in a new in Fulgrim. The story in Mortal Shell is being delivered via environmental storytelling, items, descriptions, NPC dialogues, and various notes found in the world. Giant frog is pretty cool. It's a friend. Gorf. All pretty vague and not forced upon. You get your first real objective after talking to the big bird in the local Firelink shrine. That's better. Thank you. You need to find glands of the revered so the bird could make some special nectar that can help leave the world the game takes place in. Very Dark Souls-esque. Actually, let's put all the Dark Souls-esque stuff out of the way so we could finally talk about new interesting stuff. You have your hub area with Mortal Shell's version of the Firekeepers, they're called Cesters. You may call me Cesta Janessa. For souls you have Tar, glands of the revered are pretty much great souls. Upon death you lose your Tar and respawn with a chance to get it back. I mean, it's not a bad thing, these mechanics, they, they just work. But what makes the game feel fresh is some of the new stuff. First of all, hardening. At any given time, you have the ability to turn into a statue. That is pretty much Mortal Shell's take on shields. But it doesn't quite work like shields. You can't just spam it whenever you want. It has a cooldown, and after reaching a certain damage threshold, you get back to your normal form. But yes, it makes you immune to damage. What's really interesting is that you can harden whenever you want, even during the attacks. On top of that, hardening doesn't require stamina. Actually, the opposite. It can be used to restore stamina during combat without having to back off away from the fight. See? You can restore your stamina. And you can stay here for as long as you want. A really cool mechanic that allows you to be, you know, strategic with your approach. And it also feels good and satisfying to use once you've mastered it. Definitely worth experimenting with. So, foundling a creature you start your game as is your true form. And you can roam around and use weapons while in your true form, but you just get one shot. That brings us to the next new and interesting mechanic, shells. Shells are corpses of pre-made unique characters your foundling can sort of possess and take control of. Shells are pretty much builds. And I think it's pretty cool. There's no wrong way about building your character in Mortal Shell. Once you unlock all of them, you can change them like gloves pretty much on the go. There's one shell that has more stamina, for example, that makes dodging easier. Another one has more magic, that is called Resolve here. You will certainly find one fitting your playstyle. On top of that, there is a Sekiro-like mechanic, where upon death you get a chance to insta-revive. Shit. Shit. You get kicked out of the shell. If you make it back to it, you can continue on fighting with full health. And if you die once more, well... If you die to a boss, you can leave the shell behind on the boss arena and come back using a different shell. This way you'll have one extra shell to possess during the fight. No! No! Oh shit! 
weapons. There are four melee weapons and one ranged weapon called Ballista. <laughs> Ballista Zooka, yes. It's not a lot, I know, but they are all pretty fun to use and every shell can use every weapon. It's interesting to experiment and try different combinations. On top of that, weapons can be upgraded, given you've got the right items. Parrying. No, it didn't work. Parrying mechanic is also present in Mortal Shell. Pretty straightforward, really. You press the parry button a little bit before the enemy attack. After a successful parry, you can do a repost that heals you, which really helps, especially in the beginning of the game, where the resources are scarce. Speaking of resources, to learn all the information and properties of any given item, you'll have to use it a certain amount of times. For example, there's a loot. <laughs> yeah, look, loot. The more you play, the better you become. You don't have to though, but it just sounds so cool. It also sounds metal. Actually, the whole thing looks and feels metal as fuck. I mean, look at this you died screen. Some of the, for example, healing items, these mushrooms actually grow back after you pick them up. It's a pretty cool little detail. Visually, the game looks great. I mean, you're looking at it right now, both from the graphical fidelity standpoint and aesthetically. Without spoiling too much, I'd say there's a variety of different looking locations and all of them are good, not boring. The animations are very slick. It's also worth mentioning that there's a different game mode called Virtuous Cycle. It's a roguelike with promised high replayability value where no two runs are alike. You pick any shell, grab any weapon and go to a map with enemy placement being random. You use materials found to purchase random upgrades and if you die, you start from the beginning. As for cons, there are a few bugs. For example, some enemies pop in in front of you when you are already close up, which takes you by surprise. It's not game breaking or anything, but can be annoying. But other than that, my experience with Mortal Shell was relatively bug free, to my surprise. Also, if you stream on Twitch, there's a way for you to activate Twitch drops for people who also own the game to get taught by watching you. Ain't that fun? Speaking of Twitch, don't forget to check me out and give me a follow. I might be live right now, who knows? Ooh. There's a lot more to say about Mortal Shell, but I encourage you to take a leap of faith and give it a shot, especially if you are a Souls games vet. For $30, you get a decent double A game with good animations, beautiful graphics, and an amazing dark fantasy vibe, and I'd say 15 to 20 hours of gameplay. It's a good love letter to Dark Souls. Or maybe you already own it. Tell me about your experience with Mortal Shell down in the comments. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, it massively helps and supports me. Thank you very much for watching. See ya. I don't want to give him a boiled frog, but a roasted rat, I think I can spare one. Eat hearty.